that times have changed was underlined by the rows and rows of beaming solar lamps. They use at Old Trafford these days to stimulate grass growth in winter. But the memories of the flowers of Manchester, as the eight players that perished, were called in the song that commemorates them, will always remain alive. Over 4,500 people packed into the Lower East Stand to pay tribute on the 60th anniversary of a disaster that enshrines Manchester United's history. Sir Bobby Charlton and Harry Gregg, the only two survivors of the players involved in the tragedy that touched the football world, wiped away a tear as they remembered. The teammates who perished when B-Flight 609 crashed on its third attempt to take off A's United returned from a European Cup quarterfinal tie in Belgrade. They were locked in their own thoughts as the names of Roger Byrne, Jeff Bent, Eddie Coleman, Duncan Edwards, Mark Jones, David Pegg, Tommy Taylor and Liam Whalen were read out. It's easy to forget that had he lived Edwards, described by those who remember him as the best they'd ever seen, would have been young enough to have been part of England's World Cup winning team in 1966 in United's European Cup triumph two years later, Sir Bobby, now 81, played in both. At alongside wife Norma, he removed his customary fur hat despite the freezing temperatures soon after the ceremony started, presumably out of respect. Greg, 85, a hero in the immediate aftermath of the crash, wore a United baseball cap on his first visit back to Old Trafford for 35 years. Jose Mourinho, his coaching staff and his first team squad were in attendance. Many of the players, dressed smartly in club blazers, they had not bothered with overcoats but were so Wrapped up in the solemn emotion of the occasion they seemed oblivious to the freezing temperatures. United manager Mourinho looked visibly moved as the names of the 23 victims were read out. Apart from the eight players, the death toll also included three members of staff, eight journalists, including the Daily Express's Henry Rose, the co-pilot, a cabin steward, travel agent and a supporter. Sir Alex Ferguson and Mourinho said either side of Executive Vice Chairman Ed Woodward. Ferguson and long-serving club director Mike Edelson made readings from the Bible while Woodward recited the poem, We Will Remember Them, and folk singer and lifelong United fan Pete Martin sang a moving rendition of The Flowers of Manchester. It's entirely fitting that United's youth team will today play a UEFA Under-19 Champions League game in Belgrade from where the fateful flight took off for its journey home before the refueling stop in Munich. Sir Matt Busby's twin passions were European football and the development of young players. A minute's silence was observed at the exact time of the crash 3.04 p.m., before a moving ceremony, conducted by United's club chaplain John Byers, ended with Mourinho and club captain Michael Carrick laying wreaths and the signing of the football hymn, Abide With Me, Carrick, United's longest-serving player, sat next to fellow Jordi Sir Bobby and summed up the sentiments afterwards, it was very fitting, a beautiful service, powerful and emotional, he said. For me, it was emotional sitting next to Sir Bobby and trying to come to terms with what he's been through and what was going through his mind. It was tough but a pleasure to be part of it. When I came to the club I was aware of the disaster, I'd heard the stories and my dad had told me about it, but it wasn't until I came to the club that you have that feeling of what it means to everyone here and how important it is. Harold Hardman, United's chairman at the time of Munich, vowed we will rise again.
the spectacular way the club has done just that over the last six decades is perhaps the best tribute to those who died.